This presentation will focus on the relationship between sport and national identity. And it will look into how sport has been used to promote Australian national identity. It's important to understand that modern Australian sporting achievements have always been received with great acclaim and resulted in a sense of national pride. And we can define national identity as a sense of a nation as a cohesive whole, as represented by distinctive traditions, culture, and language. And it's important to unpack how Australia's sporting success impacts on the people of Australia. So all of us living in Australia, how are we affected by Australia's success? And it's often thought that success for Australia on the sporting field has been linked to a sense of national pride, a sense of confidence, high levels of morale, so feeling good about ourselves as a nation. And it can also lead to increased participation in sport that relates to the health of the nation and also increased media coverage. But it's important to note that our national identity is something that is perceived or seen by the rest of the world. So when Australia is successful, then it's important to note that the rest of the world observes Australia's success and, and sees Australia to have advanced facilities, great technology, scientific research, a commitment and a determination to sport, a passion for sport, and also sees the nation as being a healthy nation with an able population that is prosperous and wealthy and also has advanced coaching techniques and strategies. But the world also sees Australia's flag, the coat of arms, our colours, and of course they hear the national anthem when we're successful and when we perform on the world stage. And these are important identifiers of Australia's national identity. And of course, when then Prime Minister Bob Hawke promoted the need for a new national anthem, he linked it to sport. In fact, he said the previous Olympics, for instance, you have the Brits getting up, they win a medal. They do win one occasionally, and up goes God Save the Queen, and then Australia gets up and it's the same anthem. Now that's crazy. Of course, Australia at that stage had the same anthem as the British, and so there was no distinction between the two nations when gold medals were won. And so Bob Hawke was using sport here as a way of saying, we need to be an independent nation, and we need to have our own national identity. And we need this because when we participate in sport at the highest level, we need to show that independence and prove to the world that we are Australia and not Britain. And of course, the boxing kangaroo has been a national symbol for Australia. The boxing kangaroo was frequently seen in popular culture and it's a symbol displayed prominently by Australian spectators at the Commonwealth Games and the Olympics. And it is often seen as Australia's sporting flag. And that brings us to the idea of nationalism. Nationalism and sport is often intertwined, and we see sport as a symbolic competition between nations. And often sport has reflected national conflict, and there are some examples of this that we'll talk about a little bit later in the unit. But the Olympics has been used by countries to promote a nationalist ideology at times. Australia has used sport for political purposes in the past to promote a political agenda, uh, to help politicians connect with the people. And of course, sport has been funded through the AIS, the Australian Institute of Sport, to improve our performance against other top nations. But what we're seeing today is a more subtle nationalism. Most sports are contested between national teams, and this encourages the use of sporting events for nationalist purposes at times, whether intentionally or not. The signalling of national solidarity through sport is one way of defining what's called banal nationalism. And this is the everyday representations of the nation which build a shared sense of national belonging amongst humans, a sense of tribalism through national identity. And we see this when Australia performs on the world stage against other nations. We see Australia being represented as an underdog on the world stage that has a small population that excels beyond expectation and a great example of this is the America's Cup, a yacht race. And Australia was able to win this in 1983 for the first time. Australia competes in the America's Cup against America. 
and it's a, a very, very old yacht race. And America had won this event for 132 years straight. And then finally, Australia were able to, with the help of a financial backer, were able to put together a challenge against the Americans and were able to win. And so this showcased Australia as an underdog who were able to come together, show solidarity and beat the American superpower. And of course, then Prime Minister Bob Hawke used this to really bring the nation together and use sport as a way of promoting the Australian culture. And of course, connecting with the Australian people himself. Uh, following the race, he actually encouraged Australians to have a day off the next day, um, at, uh, you know, after celebrating. And he said that any boss who sacks anyone for not turning up to work today is a bum. And he said this on Australian national TV. Uh, and so this was a way of bringing the nation together and promoting a sporting culture, but using this event to showcase Australia as an underdog, but also as a nation who scientifically and technologically can match the American superpower. And you can see here that Australia's performances against nations that are much larger in terms of population and economy, Australia can compete on the world stage against them. And the Olympics is used as a way of promoting this underdog perception of Australia, who is able to participate at very high levels and, and yet be still considered a smaller nation on the world stage. And of course, when we don't participate to the levels expected in Australia, it is a source of disappointment for the population and the nation's leaders. And so following the 1976 Montreal Olympic Games, where Australia did not win a single gold medal, the Australian Institute of Sport was devised and developed to help improve our performances on the world stage. Of course, there are many events that foster Australia's sporting identity, including the Ashes, which is an opportunity for Australia to achieve a sense of national pride against England, who are often referred to as the mother country. And of course, the rivalry between Australia and England dates back to the early days of the nation and the first settlement. Of course, the Olympic Games are an opportunity for Australia to participate at the highest level against large nations and also to showcase our capacity to organise and run major events. Of course, Australia hosted the Games in 1956 and the year 2000, and this showed that Australia is a very capable and advanced nation. And it's also reflected through our performances on the medal tally over the years. You can see that we gradually increased our medal tally up to the 1956 Games in which we hosted, and you can see that we were ranked three in the world in 1956, you can see that we had some, some steady performances. And then it wasn't until Montreal, where we received no gold medals at all, that stimulated the creation of the Australian Institute of Sport. And you can see that we saw some gradual improvement up to Sydney, and of course, the peak in Athens in 2004, in terms of gold medals won. And there's always been much discussion about our performances over the years, particularly following the 2012 Olympics in London. And we often see government funding as an issue in terms of Australia's sporting reputation, with many sports bosses calling for more funding to improve our global reputation. And you can see here in this article that our global reputation is not just hinges on our performance and the amount of gold medals won, but it also links to our trade with other nations. So you can see the importance of national identity through sport. And of course, as mentioned, Australia has hosted the Olympic Games in the past and hosting the event really does portray Australia as a very, very advanced and organized nation with great facilities and a wonderful climate for sport. You can see that the Australian media and the population in general were very much behind Australia's bid for the Olympic Games and also throughout the Olympic Games, it was a source of national pride. Now, in terms of the world recognition that Australia received for hosting, in the year 2000, IOC President Juan Antonio Samarans actually stated that he was proud and happy to proclaim that Australia had presented the best Olympic Games ever. So you can imagine the worldwide recognition that Australia received for running such a a wonderful event. And you can see in the opening ceremony, Australia was able to showcase its culture to the world 
particularly the Indigenous culture in the opening ceremony. And it was able to showcase proud Indigenous history, Indigenous art and culture, and of course the Indigenous athletes. We had Cathy Freeman light the cauldron with the torch in the stadium, but also there was a strong female athlete focus in terms of bringing the torch into the stadium. It was brought in by female athletes through around the stadium. And, and so this portrayed Australia as a fair, progressive and egalitarian society. Of course, the Commonwealth Games is another opportunity for Australia to participate against like-minded nations. And we see on the medal tally over the years that Australia has won the most gold medals at the Commonwealth Games. We've also hosted the event on a number of occasions. Other large world events include the Rugby World Cup, and the Football World Cup, which both provide an opportunity for Australian national teams to participate on the world stage and showcase our talents. And of course, that underdog spirit, particularly in the Football World Cup, which is played in many nations around the world. And with Australia's football talent and capability developing over the years, we've certainly seen better performances. But in terms of our status as a footballing nation, we still have a long way to go. So our performances there are certainly reinforced the idea of the Australian underdog. With Australia's previous successes in hosting big events, we've seen a great impact on the Australian economy. And so Australia were able to bid for the World Cup, Football World Cup in 2022. However, it was unsuccessful. But you can clearly see how Australia values hosting these big events to put Australia and its identity uh, out there into the global environment. The Australian Open Tennis is also a large-scale event. It's one of the four Grand Slam events on the tennis calendar, and we've had a very rich tennis history over the years, one that has included some fantastic players. Of course, hosting this event in January every year is an opportunity for Australia to showcase its wonderful facilities in terms of tennis and also Australia's warm climate and our landscape and culture is showcased to the world as well. It's time for us to come back now to the important question. Critically examine how sport has been used to promote an Australian national identity. And when you reflect on this question, it's important to think about all of the different examples that you've learned about and think about using those to, to showcase how sport has been used to shape Australian national identity.